one day I will have a space where I can make these videos that's not right beside this window that leads out onto a really busy street with lots of holes with loud motorcycles. One day. So it's been a while since I've done anything film photography related and I thought that I'd dip my toe back into the film photography YouTube world with uh, a fairly controversial camera, which I love. This is the Minolta Maxim 7000. Uh, it is a fully automatic film SLR camera. Uh, and when I say fully automatic, it will basically make you a cup of coffee if you push the right buttons. This sort of camera, fully automatic, autofocus, auto exposure, auto film load, auto film advance, auto film rewind, reads DX codes. Um, yeah, it's basically a foolproof camera to a certain extent. I mean, you can still screw it up, but operationally it's fairly foolproof. And these kind of cameras tend to get looked down upon a bit in the film photography community because people tend to gravitate towards film cameras that are manual. Film is a, an organic substance uh, and putting them in a fully electronically controlled camera that does everything seems kind of antithetical to film photography in general. I kind of disagree with that. I have a ton of manual SLRs and rangefinders and um, things like that and I love them all. Um, but I think this camera is equally as good. So this video is going to be five reasons why I love the Minolta Maxim 7000 and why I think you should love it too. So the first reason I love this camera is because of the fact that it's from the 1980s. Now, that might sound crazy because electronics and 1980s tend to elicit uh, scary thoughts of catastrophic failures and smoke pouring out of things but in my experience and this may not be your experience but it's definitely mine I find 1980s electronics to be quite reliable more so than I would say 90s electronics are and early 2000s electronics I find those cameras very problematic these kind of cameras just sort of keep on running and definitely better than some of the electronic stuff that started happening in the late 70s um, there's something about 80s electronics that still has a human element to the manufacturing process where it's not fully automated, um, but it is more advanced than um, the stuff that came before it. It's almost as advanced as the stuff that came after it, but in a chunkier, sort of more reliable way. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but that's my experience with 80s electronics, specifically Minolta stuff. It seems to buck the trend of early electronics devices just dying. So the second reason I love this camera is the glass selection for it. I just have a cleaning cloth sitting there like some sort of barbarian. The glass selection for this camera, it's a Minolta AF mount, which is also a Sony AF mount because Sony bought Minolta and all of their uh, DSLRs before the mirrorless stuff came out had the A mount. So all of this glass is compatible with modern Sony DSLRs. Um, when I say modern, I mean they stopped making them, but you know what I mean. There's two standout lenses that I have. They're all great, but there's two lenses that really stand out to me. One is this 50 millimeter f1.4 that I have on the camera here. Um, it is pretty quick to focus. Listen to that sound. Uh, 
Does it get much more 80s than that? I don't think so. Um, it's quick to focus. It has really nice shallow depth of field. It's very sharp in the center, even wide open. It's a great lens, and I've tested it on my Sony A390, which is a DSLR, just to make sure that I wasn't crazy because sometimes it's a little harder to tell with film, but yeah, it's, it's very good. And then there's the legendary um, 70 to 210 f4 beer can lens and it's called the beer can for obvious reasons because it essentially looks like a beer can but this is such a good lens constant f4 aperture uh, very sharp great rendering pretty good micro contrast actually it gives a bit of 3d pop and uh, the focusing on it is fast enough and very accurate um, that is one thing I'll say about this camera is the autofocus is quite surprisingly good for its age. Uh, and then additionally to those two lenses, which I really love, uh, I have the 50 millimeter f1.7, which if you find one on eBay that comes with this lens, it's a great lens. You don't necessarily have to get the 1.4. This 1.7 is quite good. Uh, I also have a 28 millimeter f2.8. Another fantastic lens. And then I also have the 28 to 85 f 3.5 to 4.5, which also has a macro functionality. And this is a surprisingly good lens. It's heavy, which it's it's got to be about the same weight as the, the, the beer can. It's a heavy lens. It's a very well-built lens. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very impressed with this lens. This camera actually belonged to my mother. She bought it new in the 1980s and it came with the 50 1.7 and this little zoom lens. I've added the other lenses to this, uh, this kit for myself. The third reason I love this camera is because it is dirt cheap. You can pick them up on eBay for less than a hundred bucks all day long with a lens, sometimes also with an external flash. They are a bargain and I don't really get why people don't want to buy these cameras. If you think it's not going to be reliable, it's less than a hundred bucks and it's such a great camera to just throw a roll of film in and go out and shoot. It's got manual controls, but if you just want a fully automated experience with a fantastic light meter that's really, really accurate, this is a, such a great camera to start with and it's so cheap. So the fourth reason to buy a Maxim 7000 is just the overall specifications of the camera. It's a very well spec camera, kind of has everything you need, nothing you don't, no crazy bells and whistles, metal focal plane shutter, it has a 0.85 magnification viewfinder with 94% coverage, it's got lots of information in the viewfinder, it's just missing a frame counter in the viewfinder, I do wish it had that, but it has a top LCD display, which you can see here, um, that shows you what mode you're in, uh, gives you a frame counter, um, shows you your aperture and your shutter speed. Uh, you've got some buttons on the top here to change the mode, um, exposure comp, ISO, and the drive. Uh, you can have it make little really annoying 80s beeping sounds if you wanted to, but you can also turn that off. Uh, these buttons here to scroll through the menu options when you're selecting what you want over here. Um, the shutter button has what's called life sensing technology basically what that means is there's a little capacitor i believe under the shutter button that when you just touch it with your finger it wakes the meter and everything up so the top display comes on and the meter fires up you can half press to focus and full press to shoot it'll shoot two frames a second uh, continuous and has a maximum shutter speed of one two thousandth of a second the meter on this camera is one of the best that i've used in terms of accuracy. I've had no issues with it. And the fifth and final reason to buy a Minolta Maxim 7000 is it's just so cool. Like, look at how cool this camera is. Is there anything that looks more 80s than a Minolta Maxim 7000? I don't think that there is unless you've got a Nintendo Entertainment System sitting in front of you and you're blowing out the cartridge because it won't work right. You don't get much more 80s than that, and you don't get much more 80s than this. It's a fantastic camera. It looks great. It performs well. The lens lineup is outstanding. The specs are great, and it is so underappreciated in the film community. One bonus thing about why I love this camera is, like I said, it was my mom's, and uh, it's really cool to be able to continue using this camera into the 
2020s here when it was bought in the 1980s, 1985, I believe. This camera was $700 in 1985. I'm gonna stop recording right now and I'm gonna go figure out what that is with inflation. Hang on. So in today's dollars, that's about 1800 bucks. 1800 uh, bucks, I believe that was the body only price for this camera. For my mom and dad to have bought this camera in 1985, that's quite the investment. Anyways, you guys, I hope you've enjoyed my foray back into film photography YouTube. It's been a while. Uh, I've got another sort of electronic-y film camera that I shot a couple rolls with that I'm gonna be reviewing the next I don't know when, a couple of months probably, whenever I get around to it, but uh, you guys will see what that is then. In the meantime, uh, I have bought myself another Maxim 7000 and a whole bunch of other film cameras from um, a friend of mine on Twitter whose dad is liquidating his film camera collection. So I just uh, picked up a whole bunch of stuff, including another Maxim 7000. He's a Minolta man by my own heart. I love it. Minolta, so underappreciated. No, oh, no, it's not. People love Minolta. I love Minolta. You love Minolta. Go buy a Maxim 7000. Leave a comment below. Tell me why I'm right or tell me why I'm wrong. I love to hear both sides, but for my money, it is so hard to beat the Minolta Maxim 7000. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.